Well, hello, everybody. How are you doing today? You guys, come up with your teachers. Get up. How are you doing today? All right, now, now, tell me, who's my elementary teachers in here? Give me a shout out. Let's go. Elementary? Yeah. High school. Where's my high school teachers at? Okay, what about prospective teachers? Who wants to be a teacher in here, right? Maybe one right here. Intermediate school teachers. Who's in here? Yeah. That's right. Whenever I tell people that I'm an eighth grade science teacher, I always get the same thing. God bless you. <laughs> oh, man, I don't know how you can deal with those kids. I'll tell you how I deal with them. I love those kids. Right? Those kids are the ones that get me up in the morning. Those are the kids that push me every single day to be a better person. Right? That's what we all do every single day, right? That's the reason we get up, to make our students better every single day. Now, I want to tell you right now, as we are going through this, make sure that you're staying connected with your fellow educators right here as well, right? The conversation doesn't happen just up here. It happens between all of you. And while I'm talking, I want you to talk to each other, right? In your social media, make sure you hashtag the California Teacher Summit. Okay, if you want to follow me on Twitter, I'm at JoeMarquez70. But a big thing about today's conference is staying connected with each other, right? This is a conference, but it's really a celebration. We're celebrating teachers. We're celebrating innovation. We're celebrating change. And this is the kind of excitement that we need when we're starting a new year of school. Right? Some of us start the year excited, and as we go through it, we go, oh, how much longer till summer? Right? 36 weeks? Oh. We always have that teacher on campus, right? 37 weeks to go. Ding, ding, ding. We all have that teacher, right? But we need to be able to go, oh, man, 36 weeks till summer? I still have more to give these kids. Right? We cannot always be working towards the summer. Right? We have to be working towards change. Now, when I was growing up, I had two heroes in my life. I had my grandfather who told me that, you know what, when you're looking for a job and a career, it's not about a job that makes a lot of money. It's about a job that makes a lot of sense. That's what my grandfather would tell me. He would also tell me, because I don't care what you do in your life as long as you find a way to make a difference. And that's always stuck with me. And my other heroes were my teachers, right? My teachers in school who inspired me who told me learning is a pathway to a greater chance in life. The knowledge of the unknown can truly change your life. Teachers like Mr. Lake, Mr. Kinney, who's sitting in the back right now, is my eighth grade science teacher, and I still remember that to this day. He taught eighth grade science at Alta Sierra, and I teach eighth grade science at Alta Sierra. You see, he changed my life because he was a memorable teacher to me. At that moment, he probably didn't know that, right? But he made me a better person. He changed who I am. I don't need a microphone, I'm loud, right? <laughs> he made me somebody that I am today. And he may not have known that. You may not know every year that you're making a change in a child's life. And that's the most important thing that you can do as an educator. It's not about the lessons, it's not about the standards, it's about the kids, and we have to make sure we put that out and we make sure that that's what we're doing every single day, is saying, how is this going to help my kids? Now, for me, we have to understand that we are the agents of change, right? Not our administrators telling us what to do, but us as educators showing us and evolving how to teach. That's what we have to start looking. We, and we have to stop looking at our kids and saying, you know what, you're doing okay, you'll do fine next year. You're getting a C, you're doing all right, you're getting a B. No, we cannot accept our kids just doing good work. We have enough good students in this world. We need great students. We have to stop just pushing our kids to the next grade and start pushing them harder in our class today. That's what we have to look forward to. Now, for me, what pushes my students is technology. You may see I'm a kind of a technology nerd, right? I got this belt. The first time I stepped up here, everybody was looking down here. I'm like, hey, everybody, I'm up here. You know? I had to stop wearing this belt in class because it was like a neon light saying, your fly is down, your fly is down. 
right? But technology for me is that spark. It gets kids who normally aren't interested in science or even being in school, it brings out a spark in them that they finally feel they have equity in the lesson, right? I use technology in a way that's not like normal ways, right? Technology can be used good or bad. Technology is not meant just to replace a task. Technology is not meant for us to come in and say, instead of writing that report on paper, you're going to type it up on a document. Instead of taking notes on paper, you're going to do a Cornell notes that I created in Microsoft Word. No, technology is meant to reinvent the task. Technology is meant for students to do something that would never be thought possible if it was just done with traditional means. Now, I want you to understand, Mr. Kinney was a fantastic teacher, but he doesn't have, he didn't have the tools that we have today. He doesn't, he didn't have the students that we have today. I mean, I guess he'll tell you, to make me feel good, that I turned out all right, you know? But understand, the kids we have today are a different beast. They're completely different. Every single one of them has an $800 machine in their pocket. Some people call it a phone. I call it a digital device with a phone app, right? Which hardly works, you know what I mean? So we have to understand that these kids are accessing technology every single day. If I wanted to know something back in the day, you'd have to go to the library to look it up. Now all the kids have to do is go, Siri, tell me this. It's like their own little personal assistant. It's completely different. We as educators have to stop fearing the technology. We have to stop fearing the technology. A lot of teachers come up and tell me, well, if I allow them to use a phone, they go, it's not a phone, it's a digital device. We have to change that mindset right off the bat. If I allow my students to use their phone in class, they're just going to misuse it. They're going to just text in class, they're going to be doing this in class, I'm going to be talking, and they're not going to be listening. I go, well, if that ever happened, what would you do? Well, I'd walk by and I'd take their phone. I go, now listen to me for a second. I go, have you ever talked in class, gave a lecture in class, and they're up there and they're writing notes, and you walk by and somebody's doodling, drawing a little picture maybe of you, kind of funny, right? They go, yeah, that's happened quite a bit. Have you ever taken away their pencil? Well, no, I just told them, stop doing that, get on task. Exactly. <laughs> then why would you take away their digital device? You see, the problem is, we give our students these computers and these digital devices, and we say, here you go, go use it. But we never train them the proper way to use them. That is our fault. That is our fault. I always tell teachers, would you ever give your kid who just turned 16 keys to a car. They go, we mean without training? Yeah, without training. Hell no! <laughs> they're gonna get they're gonna crash into somebody, somebody's gonna crash into them. They need driver's training, they need me to sit in the car with them saying, you're doing it wrong, you're doing it wrong, you're doing it wrong. Right? You're sitting in that other seat with the fake imaginary brake trying to stop the car. Right? No! You would never give keys to a 16-year-old without training. Then why do we give digital devices to kids without any training? We have so many kids getting in trouble these days, right? Um, athletic code ethics, school code ethics, because they don't know that when they hit like on somebody else's tweet or somebody else's Facebook post, they don't know that it belongs to them now. We have so many kids getting in trouble, losing scholarships, because what they are doing on social media is inappropriate. I always talk to them about their digital footprint, and their digital footprint is who they are. We are the most documented humans in the history of the world. There are more pictures taken every minute than every picture ever taken from the beginning of time to 1990. And most of those are selfies, duck face pictures, and pictures of food. You can kind of see how we're misusing the technology already. We have to train our kids how to use technology correctly. That is extremely important. We as educators have to understand that we have to change every year. We can't become stagnant. 
I always tell teachers, teaching, education is like a stream. You need to flow with the current. You need to go around the bend. Every year is different. Every student is different. Why do you have your holy binder of, of, of photocopies you're going to do year after year? We have to change, right? Water is the giver of life. We need water on this planet to survive. But if the stream stops, it becomes stagnant, and that water that used to be great for us becomes deadly to us. And we have to move like a stream. We have to move every year. Every year, we have to feel like it's our first year teaching. We have to feel like we're standing over the edge about to fall off. We can't sit back in our comfort zone and say, well, it worked last year. Well, it worked last year. Because you will soon find yourself 20 years down the road doing the same things. And I see it all the time. I am an eighth grade science teacher, but I'm also an instructional technology coach in my area. And I always go up to Buchanan, which is where I went to high school, and I sit in on teachers' classes for my teachers, and I show them, well, you know, you can do a little bit of technology here and a little bit of technology there. And they always tell me, I've been doing things the same year after year. I'm okay. I go, well, listen, you may be doing things year after year the same. You may have seen 25,000 students throughout your career. But the first day of school, those kids in your class, that's the first time they ever get to see you. They deserve the best you you can possibly be. They deserve the first year you who's excited about being a teacher, who wants to be in that class, not the teacher who's counting down the days until they retire. That's what we need in our classroom. We need first year teachers as a mindset every single day. If you're a first year teacher or coming on your second year or about to be a teacher, you better remember the way it feels to be in that class that first day of school. And you never forget that. You need to remember the excitement and the fear and the want to change. Because the moment you lose that, I'm sorry to say, you got to leave the classroom. Because our students deserve better. Our students deserve great teachers, not just good teachers. So we got to focus on ourselves to be great every single day. But how do we become great? By communicating with each other. Right? We all find ourselves in our classrooms, 7 in the morning, we walk in, we have four walls, the kids come in, the door shuts, and we don't see an adult for almost eight hours. Right? I mean, really, we love our kids, but how's that going to push us? We need to tear down our walls and open ourselves up to a community of educators. We need to stay connected every single day. A conference like this doesn't end the moment you go home, it's just the beginning. The teachers you meet here need to be your partners. They need to be your team. And I'm not talking about just our PLC team, not just our departments. You gotta branch out. You gotta move from your departments, move from your school, move from your district, and start seeing what other teachers are doing. We are better connected when we connect with each other when we share experiences, when we share lessons, when we share what works and what doesn't work, we become better teachers on a daily basis. So we have to stop thinking, oh, I went to one conference and I'm gonna try that and I'm not gonna talk to another adult all year. We have to stay connected. And I'll tell you what, social media has changed my life for that. Twitter is the greatest professional development you can ever have as an educator because you can do ed chats online at, at 7 o'clock at night in your pajamas drinking coffee and you can be learning more than you ever thought possible. I highly encourage you to stay connected that way. Now, we need to understand as well that sometimes when teachers start using technology, they see something at a conference and they want to start using technology, they use it a little bit incorrectly, right? They start using it once again as instead of writing a paper, I'm going to have them type it. Instead of having them do a, uh, a little poster of drawing, they're going to uh, make, make a PowerPoint instead. We need to have them reinvent the tasks. Why not have them use technology to do interviews with actual subject competent people from colleges? Why not actually have the computer to have them use 
doing interviews with people in that actual professional field? Why just have them research it on the internet when they can have a live talk with them? And it's possible. And it doesn't cost you a dime. You can use Skype. You can use Google Hangouts. You can invite professionals into your class without ever having to do anything but ask. We have to start understanding that. Now, students need to work together as well. Students need to understand that they are better together too. Our most common jobs now coming up, they are looking for collaboration and communication skills. Those are the main skills they're looking for. And we need to add those into every single lesson that we do in these days. We need to make sure that we let our students learn to work together. And with technology, why limit it to students who are just in the same class? With shareable technology like Google and Microsoft 365, you can have a student who is working with another student in another room, in another school, in another district. I have our eighth grade science students working with another eighth grade science class in Indiana. All I have to do is ask the teacher, hey, we're working on Adams today, what about you? Yeah, let's do it. And we co-teach through the internet, we co-learn through the internet, and they have partners through the internet. Don't worry about that, it fell off. So we have to understand that we need our students to be connected. Why? Because some of our schools are actually, all of our schools are so diverse with different populations, with different kind of kids. We need our students to know that we are all in this together, that we are all trying to accomplish the same thing, to better ourselves. We need our students to stop thinking about what they have and don't have today, and about who they are going to be tomorrow. And the best way to do that is to tear down your walls, open it up to outside community members, and show them who they can be. A classroom is not a place that you walk into. Education is not a thing that you do. It's a thing that you experience. And we have to start having our students experience our lessons, not just listen to them. I teach science, and there's that big buzzword all the time about STEAM, right? Science, STEAM. But you know what? We need, we need that A. We need that A, because a lot of science teachers go, no, just STEM, it's just STEM, not STEM. No, we need that A. We need to stop creating a lesson that's fully set out for the student. You're going to do this, 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 and this, and this is what should be the product. No. You say, at the end, this is what I want. You decide how you're going to present it. Because with technology tools, they have those options. And you, as the educator, shouldn't be fearful. Because they are going to know how to do it. You don't have to know how to do anything, right? They will know how to do it. Now, as you can tell, I'm very passionate about using technology in the class, right? But I don't use all technology because not all of it works, right? I see a lot of technology coming into my school, and I only use it if it fits three, yeah, three, three sets. Inspect, redirect, make correct. That means the technology I use, at any moment, I have to be able to inspect their work. Not after they leave my class, not after they turn in the assignment, not on the weekend when I'm watching the Niners lose. That's very unfortunate for me, I love the Niners. Right? Right then and there. And when I see the class doing it incorrectly, I need to be able to stop them and redirect them towards how to do it correctly. And we do it as a class. We have the unacceptable, good, and great model. We bring up something on the screen and we say, that's unacceptable. Unacceptable doesn't mean bad work. It means at this point in the year, what you've given us as a class, we can't accept it. You didn't include the things that will give us an acceptable answer. That's what unacceptable means. Then we'll bring up something that says good. Class, why is this only good work? Well, they have the right answer, but they didn't explain how they got it. And then we show them great work. Why is this great? It's correct, it's written correctly, and they explain how they got it. Perfect. You see, the reason kids give us good work is because they think it's great work. The reason they give us good work is because they think you're just going to accept it and they can fly under the radar. No more. No more. Because here's the thing. We are living in a world where everybody is telling us that we can change the world from the top down. We can fix this problem by making this law. 
we can fix this problem by passing this bill. It doesn't work that way, people, because once people become a certain age, they are stuck in their ways. The only way to change the world is from the bottom up. The only way to change the world is to create great students. Because of this, being a teacher is the most important profession in the world today. And people have to understand that. We all know I'm preaching to the choir, but everybody has to know we are the ones that see the kids every day, eight hours a day. We are the ones that they're feeding off of. We need them to have an educational experience that is meaningful to them. That is the only way to change the world. And teachers go, well, learning all this technology, that, that is going to be difficult. Because I have so much I'm given to do by my administration. Learning technology is one more thing to put on my plate. And I say, no, technology is the plate. Technology gives you a base to deliver everything your district is asking you to do, and it makes it easier for you. So when I am asked, and you're going to be asked today, why do you teach? I tell you why I teach. I teach to change the world. I teach to get the have-nots a chance. I teach to rock education to its core, and I say, you're not going to tell me how I'm going to teach because every class is different, every student is different. I teach because my teachers are my heroes. I teach because every success that I have reflects on Mr. Kinney. I teach because one day in the future, I will have kids that become teachers that make a difference, and that will reflect upon me. I teach because what my grandpa told me is, I don't care what you do, as long as you do something to make a difference. And I'll tell you what, you are the people that are going to make a difference in this city, in this state, in this country, and in this world. So the moment you start thinking being a teacher is hard work, you better start saying, yeah, it is. But nobody ever said changing the world was going to be easy. Ask Mr. Kinney and me. We don't have hair anymore, and we both started with very good flowing locks of hair. <laughs> I want to tell you I am proud to be a part of a profession of people that care, of people that want to make a difference, of people like you. You inspire me. You make me want to be better. And when I'm better, my students are better, my students are better, my class is better, my school is better, my district is better, my state and country are better. I teach because I love my community. And I love each and every one of you for being a part of being a maker of change. Thank you so much, everybody. I appreciate it.